It's a term that we hear in everyday life, but mathematically speaking, a proof is an argument that demonstrates that some conclusion is logically certain to be true. As we will see over the course of this video and several others, there are a few different methods of proof, but in general, we'll start with something that we know to be true. And then we will say, well, if this is true, something else must be true. And that means something else must be true. And therefore, within a few links of logic down the chain, we can show that this means that our conclusion is logically certain to be true. Now, there are a few different methods of proof. Now, technically speaking, I don't suppose we can really prove anything without reference to something else. We can only say that if we assume some base truth to be true, then we can say that the consequence of that assumption means that everything else afterwards is true. And it is well beyond the scope of this subject, but there's a, a set of mathematical axioms which we agree to be true. And from that, we can then prove everything else. If you're interested in reading more about the mathematical axioms, I would encourage you to do so, but we're not going to cover those in this subject. The type of proof which I, I suppose I verbally described on the previous uh, slide was a direct proof. And this is probably what most people think of when they say of a proof. And we just have a series of implications that say, well, if my starting premise is true, then some other statement must be true. And if that statement is true, then something else and eventually we reach the statement, therefore, my concluding statement must be true. And these we can see fairly clearly through implications. If I know that the statement P being true implies Q being true. And every time Q is true, that means R is true. And every time R is true, that means S is true. And every time S is true, that means T is true. We can say by direct proof that P implies T, that every time P is true, T is also true. Just to get a little bit less abstract, if we take the very reasonable position that every person is younger than his or her father, then it logically follows that you're also younger than your father's father. You're also younger than your father's 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 father, and so on. It doesn't matter how far back we go, because we know that everybody is younger than the generation above, down that line. Therefore, whether we go one generation, two generations, or however many generations down that line, we still have this relationship proven. For an example of something which we can prove by direct proof, I'd just like to introduce the idea of divisibility. So we say that an integer a divides an integer b if and only if there is another integer s such that a times s equals b. Now, we say that as A divides B, or we can write it with this um, vertical line, A divides B. And what this means in logical notation, and if you need to go back to previous materials to revise logical notation, please do so. But this is saying that for A, and b belonging to z, the set of integers, the two integers a and b, a divides b if there exists another integer s, s belonging to z, s is an integer, such that a times s 
is equal to b. Again, getting a little bit less abstract, we would say that 7 divides 42 because there is an integer and it's equal to 6, such that 7 times 6 is 42 and 6 is an integer. But I would say that 10 does not divide 42 because there is no integer, there is no s belonging to z such that 10 times s is 42. Yes, I can multiply 10 by something to get the answer 42. It's 4.2, but that is not a member of the set of integers. To get to our nice simple direct proof, we'll introduce a definition which I I hope people have seen maybe back in primary school even, which says that an integer a is even if and only if 2 divides it, only if 2 divides a. And if it's not even, then it's odd. Keep in mind here we're only talking about integers, but if 2 divides the integer, it's even. If 2 does not divide the integer, it's odd. So the statement that we want to prove here is that 2 divides n implies that 2 also divides n squared. That says that if I pick an even integer, that its square is an even integer. With all of these proofs, it's always worth just writing down exactly what information the information that we're given tells us. Well, we're told that 2 divides n. That's our starting premise. Now, because we know that 2 divides n, we know that there is a number, well, half as big as n, called s, which is an integer, such that 2s equals n. So now that we can say that we know there exists an integer s such that 2s equals n, the statement I want at the end talks about n squared. So if I square n to get n squared, I square 2s to get 2s all squared, which is two lots of 2s squared. But what this does tell me then 2s squared is obviously an integer, because s is an integer, so s squared is an integer, so 2s squared is an integer. So I know that there does exist another number, such that I can write n squared as two lots of that integer. That integer in this case is equal to 2s squared, so I can show that I can write n squared as two lots of another integer, so I have shown directly that 2 divides n squared, and hence n squared must be even. Now, although we have the nice linguistic thing of using the phrase odd or even, the same proof actually works for other integer divisors, saying instead that 2 divides n implies that 2 divides n squared, I can also say that for integers, 3 divides n implies that 3 divides n squared, and so on. Although direct proofs are quite a tidy and, I think, relatively simple method of proof, we can't use the same technique every time. Let's now try to prove a very similar statement that says, if n is an integer, such that n squared is even, can I prove that n is also even? So what I want to show is that for all integers n, such that 2 divides n squared, i.e. n squared is even, that implies that 2 divides n, so n is even. That's what I want to show. 
If I try to do this by direct proof, very similar to what we did on the last slide. I say, well, OK, 2 divides n squared. So that tells me that there's another integer s such that 2s is equal to n squared. But now, instead of trying to go from a statement about n to a statement about n squared, I'm going the other way. So I have to square root the n squared. So all this tells me is that I know that my integer n is equal to the square root of 2 times the square root of my integer s. But that isn't telling me that n is two lots of anything for some other integer, in this case t. So it's not wrong, that statement, but it doesn't help me say, OK, I can rewrite n as two lots of t, therefore n is even. This method of proof sort of fails me here. So I can't use the direct method of proof. We will, of course, over the course of this subject, and indeed in the next video posted here, see alternative methods of proof which can prove this statement.